We know that companies are moving to the cloud, but the question is whether the underlying network can support this move. Today on Future Now Talks, I have with me Rehan Sami. Rehan is leading the solutions architects team at Etisalat, the team responsible for designing end-to-end digital solutions. Welcome to Future Now Talks, Rehan. Thanks for having me over, Adia. What role does the network play when organizations are moving their workload to the cloud? So let's start with some statistics, Adia. It's been reported that more than 50% of applications have moved to the cloud. And according to a recent deep packet inspection study on the internet last year, the total global cloud traffic as compared to the internet traffic has grown by 45%. With these growth magnitudes, definitely the network plays a very important role. While businesses are moving their app workloads to the cloud and transforming digitally, some important factors can be overlooked and it, the network is one of them. What businesses need to understand is if their network is not fit for purpose, the end users might find accessing the cloud problematic and the applications will not perform at their best. Moreover, if cloud migration is the growth strategy of the company, then the limitations of the network will make it hard to scale on demand. This puts a lot of emphasis on selecting the right technology, the most appropriate topology and resources for the van while moving your workloads to the cloud. So what is it that CIOs and CTOs should consider in their current one to ensure that they are cloud ready? So let's take a step back. The first and foremost thing that the decision makers need to do is to change the mindset and shift away from the legacy and embrace the future. This should be a well-planned, well-thought-of, and a gradual shift, but it is inevitable. It cannot be that on one side, they want to move their applications to the cloud, while on the other side, they're still holding on to their legacy networks. This can be for MPLS, internet, IPsec, VPNs. The fact of the matter is that these legacy networking technologies were not designed to meet modern day requirements, simply because of their rigid hardware dependent backend. So moving away from legacy networks, what are the typical traits of a modernized and cloud ready network? For the right user experience and to maximize the benefits of cloudification, the network must be virtualized, dynamic, scalable, secure, and application aware. This is where SD-WAN software defined wide area networking comes into play. SD-WAN is an overlay technology that works with the available legacy underlay like MPLS or internet and gives the much needed scalability, agility, and the seamless connectivity to the cloud applications. It also empowers the organizations with a much better visibility into their WAN environment and also the performance of their applications on this WAN. Subsequently, what network administrators can do is make better decisions much faster to maintain the user experience that is required. So you mean to tell me that MPLS and SD1 can coexist? We get this all the time. So let's start by distinguishing the two terms. For completeness, as I said, SD-WAN is software-defined wide area networking, and MPLS is multi-protocol label switching. SD-WAN is an overlay technology, whereas MPLS is one of the several underlay options that is required to give the connectivity for the SD-WAN network to work. Since both of them are two different things, it's illogical and, in my opinion, unfair to say what one would take over the other. From a cloud readiness perspective, for sure SD-WAN is the future, but it still needs an underlay. And with this, the combination of SaaS applications from the cloud, we would see some impact on MPLS and a decline, but not a demise, at least not in the near future, because there are still applications that perform much better over the MPLS network. And this is what CIOs and CTOs need to be cautious of when they're redesigning their networks. Companies that are providing mission critical services like banks, governments, security agencies, they need to take this matter very carefully when they are modernizing their networks. How important is it for CIOs and CTOs to select the right network services partner for this modernization of their WAN? It is very important that customers select the right network services partner that can enable them in achieving their transformation goals. A carrier grade solution, both for the overlay and the underlay technologies, will not only help the customer move away from the legacy to the modern network, but will also reap the benefits of this transformation, including SLAs, end-to-end managed services, and a seamless and scalable connectivity to their applications on the cloud. So now if we step away from WAN and PLS, the network, and we think about the future, if there's one thing 
that you can keep preserved for the future? What would you choose? With all this rapid digitization and modernization that's happening around us, I believe our lives are becoming extremely busy and we are not getting enough time to take care of ourselves, our wellness, our health, and it's only gonna get worse. As a health and fitness practitioner, I would want to preserve that needed balance to maintain an active, healthy lifestyle, not only for ourselves, but also for the future generations. If I ask you the other way around, if there is something in the future that you think might happen and you can bring it today, what would you choose? I'll link this with my previous answer. As I said, that life has become very busy and finding time for exercise, cycling, swimming, running is a challenge nowadays. But on the flip side, there's a lot of technological advancement in the field of exercise and fitness. The new term fit tech it itself is a growing industry, the potential of which would be around $4 billion in US alone in 2022. We're talking about wearables, virtual gyms, digitally streamed workout sessions, all of this is a reality today and more is yet to come. So what I would personally want is the future of fit tech to be available right now so that more people can adopt an active lifestyle and stay healthy. Maybe I'll invest in fit tech. You should. Thank you, Rehan, for joining me on Future Now Talks. Thank you, Ali. It was a pleasure. At Future Now, we bring the latest solutions and technologies by collaborating with scale-ups, IoT developers and customers. And that's what the Future Now Talks are all about, so stay tuned.